Let's take a look at the fallback order for str and the representation function. So what do I mean by fallback order? So what I mean is when you do a print statement like this, if I run this and do a print statement, you can see that you get user-friendly representation of this D object. This is because over here, we have declared the str function. This is a special type function that's turned into Python, but you have to define it in your code, in your class. So here I have a dog class. And what I want to do is I want whenever a user does print the variable D where they've defined a dog or created a dog, I want to know what's in this B variable in a user-friendly way. So we get output like this. So what happens is if you don't define any of these functions, so if I comment out these functions, if I comment out str and I comment out the rep r, and if I run this again, and then if I click on to here, and you can see when you don't have any of those functions, you get this output. So the fallback order comes in this fashion. First, it looks for the str function. If that exists, it will execute it. Next, it will look for rep r. If that exists, it will execute it. And finally, if both of these do not exist, then it will execute the standard one, which is over here. So you might be wondering, how does this standard one actually get generated? So this gets generated by, if you do d, so that's your variable, and then under start. And then if you look for something called class, and then another property called module, and that gives you the module name. So up to this point, it gives you main, because we are in the Jupyter notebook, that's what the module is called. And then by the same fashion, you can do D and then you can do the name of the class. So notice the underscore underscores. So if I were to print this, you can see that we get the name dog. And then to get the ID, you just use the ID function and give it the reference to your object. And that will give you the unique ID that represents this object. And you can see every time it gets changed, you run the cell, it changes to a different ID number. So as you can see here, it keeps changing. So essentially everything put together to get this string, you get something like along the line of class module name, which is this main part over here. And then you've got the class name, chase dog, and then the object reference ID. So now moving back to the fallback order. So you can see this is the default one. So now what we'll do is we'll just take this line out and we'll just use D. So you can see at the minute, the print statement and the D, they both practically print the same thing. But as soon as we add the string one, so as soon as we add this, so now that we've added that str function, you can see that for the print statement, this is working. But for doing the repo or just printing a variable, we still get this. So then what you do is if I take that out, and just use the wrapper one because this one takes priority over everything else. So you can see here, str is now commented out and wrapper has been left. So now if I run this again, you can see that we get for the print statement and we're just printing the variable without the print statement, we get the same output. This is because rep r takes priority. So if you can't find anything, then it will use the default object. Otherwise, it will use rep r. And then finally, if it can find string, then it will use the string one. So now if we add the string one, so here I have enabled them. So if I run this again and then go down here and run this again, and you can see now for print statement, it's using the str version and it's using the representation function for where we just do the D object.